Uh, can everyone hear me? Um, I would like to take an opportunity to introduce someone who needs no introduction. Uh, Jackie Moreau, as we all know, she knows everybody. Uh, she founded Commit uh, to Flip Blue. Uh, she has worked tirelessly, tirelessly to get all of us to come and volunteer and flip the Senate and keep the Central Valley blue, hold the House majority, and put a Democrat, Biden and Harris, in the White House through postcard writing. Jackie, tell us what's going on. Uh, thank you, Joel. Welcome to the one month to victory happy hour, everyone. Um, my name is Jackie Moreau, and I'm very, very happy to be here with all of you today. You know, America has suffered a cataclysmic loss when Trump was elected. And she has taken a beating in each of his countless and relentless attacks on our rule of law, public health, people of color, democratic institutions and national security, to name a few. It sometimes feels like our country has lost its way, but that is not correct. America still stands for decency. We are a country of people and for the people, and the people will speak in November, and we will eradicate this precedent along with the rest of the self-serving accomplices. You know, um, this two nights ago, you know, Trump reframed himself during the debate. He brought more of the same bigoted, dishonest, simple-minded rants we've come to expect from him. He didn't recast his presidency, past or future, he definitely did not redeem his character. He didn't reframe the discussion. On the other hand, Biden's fundamental decency, competence, and country before self were at full display. These are the essential qualities. Always, really always, but especially now, and we will fight for and support the candidates that share them. Justin Ginsburg's video reminded me of an interview she gave in 2015. She wanted to be remembered as someone who used whatever talent she had to do her work to the best of her ability and to help her repair the tears in her society to make things a little better through the use of whatever ability she had. And then I think of you, I think of all of you, day in and day out, you have been fulfilling this essential RVG mission. We need, we have a lot of work ahead of us and we need to work even harder. We need to increase our time commitment we need to engage and involve our network of family and friends. We need to power up and power on. We are at a crossroads and the destination is in sight. We cannot sleep. We can sleep. We can all sleep after we've won. Thank you all so much for earning your exhaustion. It is up to us to get this done. Uh, okay, so um, let's talk about today's lineup. Um, tonight's lineup, we, you know, we, you will hear from some outstanding speakers and uh, they will present to you um, with, uh, and then we will present uh, you with opportunities to make a difference in November. Um, we will cover a lot of ground tonight, and uh, I know you are bound to have questions, comments, and productive ideas because you are all amazing. Uh, so please rate these, um, raise these in the group chat, and we will ensure that they all get answered. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, portrait um, of Senator Kamala Harris. Uh, painted by our wonderful artist and volunteer, uh, Annie Jacquemot-Barrington. Is she, is she here with us tonight? Hi, Annie. 
Uh, so if you uh, donate, so please donate during the event or right now to enter in the drawing for a lovely painting of Senator Harris. Uh, thank you to our wonderful sponsors. We, you know, the work that we're doing cannot be possible with the without the generosity of all of you, not just our sponsors, but the support of all our donors funding our field campaign and it would not be possible without you. So we are deeply, deeply grateful for all the donors. So thank you. And Congressman Desaunier. Uh, you know, um, when I reached out to Congressman Desaunier, I, I really wanted um, to, to hear him because I've heard him many, many times on different occasions. And I always leave feeling so incredibly inspired and motivated. Uh, so we are really grateful that he, he is here. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Cong Congressman uh, Mark Desaunier. For over 20 years, um, Congressman Desaunier has fought for working families, uh, livable wage and accessible education. Um, he, his ser uh, public service is extensive from a uh, Concord councilman to Cal uh, Contra Costa supervisor to California assemblyman. And for the past six years, our congressman, uh, he has been our congressman in the 11th district. Um, and he has also introduced uh, legislation to combat um, greed and corporate greed, income inequality, housing inequality, um, and he's facilitated the transition of workers out of the uh, fuel industry and to protect our environment. Uh, he lives in Contra Costa where he raised his two sons. He is an avid runner with 21 completed marathons, if you can believe it, 21 completed marathons under his belt. Friends, please give our beloved Congressman Desaunier a hearty welcome. Welcome, Congressman Desaunier. Thank you, Jackie. Thank Congressman, you. oh, excuse me. Congressman, my name is Joel Schaefer. They've asked me to send a few questions your way that we've collected from our folks. We want to thank you so much for representing us. Your plain thought, talking, thoughtful comments are always quite inspiring. Could you tell us what it's Lauren? like to be campaigning during a pandemic and in such crisis? Well, first off, let me okay, thank you. Hold on, what's happening? Um, I'm, in, I'm inspired. And hold on, Congressman Desaunier, we can't hear you. We can hear him. I could hear him. Yeah. We Lauren, can hear him. Hear him. Like <laughs> Congressman Desaunier. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we can hear yes, you. we can hear you. Jackie, would you like yeah, me to hold on. I cannot spot the Congressman Desaunier. <laughs> hold on. Okay. The joys of technology. Well then, everybody. Jackie, we can hear him just fine. I believe everyone can hear him. Jackie, we can hear him just fine. Congressman, please go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be 2020 without some technological help. <laughs> So the question was, uh, what's it like campaigning in uh, the era of COVID? And this is what it's like. Um, and I miss the, the personal interaction and contact um, and the energy I get from that. You know, we all know that 80% of communication is nonverbal. So being present uh, with other human beings is, is tremendously invigorating and important. Um, but this, this isn't bad. and. Uh, uh, it is what it is. Um, I just want to thank you all. It's inspiring what you're doing. Uh, we've all heard, <clears throat> those of us been around politics long enough, that this is the most important election of our lifetime. Uh, and I never thought I would be a member of Congress, but be in this kind of environment where I really thought 34 days from now, we will decide whether we have a democracy or not. President Trump doesn't care about democracy, doesn't care about rules. And let me tell you, 
as bad as it looks from outside, it's thousands of times worse when you see what he's doing with public service and institutions, how um, people in his administration are going, is go are going in to these departments four years later and um, forcing them into their own making as best they can. So we'll see if the rule of law has survived, but dependent on the success of America, 34 days from now, this is no hyperbole. This is, no under, this is an understatement. Um, this election will determine uh, whether America is at least attempting to be a democracy. And our success will echo down through our lifetimes to our kids and grandkids. Thomas Paine said at the founding of this country, these are the times that try our soul. And truly, I felt that way to answer the question um, over and over again as we get closer to this election, 34 days. The repulsiveness of his actions in the debate. Um, it's just hard to fathom what's happened to this country. And we now know what the Russians have done uh, through social media, um, through manipulating people, through targeting. Uh, President or Secretary Clinton lost the presidency by 77,000 votes. Uh, in this congressional district alone, she won by 225,000 votes. They knew where to target, they knew where to suppress votes, particularly those of color, and they knew where to get normally low propensity turnouters, turn out overwhelmingly white, um, where they needed to get them to turn out in Michigan, Minnesota, and Pennsylvania uh, to repress votes in North Carolina and Florida. So here we are. So Congressman, people are wondering, if the, what are the Democrats' plans if the election is thrown to the House and Senate? Well, there's an article in the Washington Post today about the hard work um, Nancy, the speaker, has been doing to make sure even though the rules are set up against us, each state gets one vote. Um, California gets one vote to determine who uh, becomes president of the United States, 40 million people. Um, and Wyoming, uh, with 640,000 votes, uh, gets one vote. Wyoming, which is about half the size of the population of Contra Costa. So we are preparing as best we can. And um, we have a providential speaker right now, the first and second woman speaker in the history of the country. And um, she is hard at work as are all of us, um, making sure we have those votes. Right, so uh, assuming things really went well and we had a blue Senate and a blue White House, what is your number one legislative goal for 2021? Uh, my number one is uh, to get an infrastructure bill. I'm on both the transportation and the labor committee. Both of those subject areas have been um, areas of expertise in my 30 years in elected office. Uh, my colleagues, I think, acknowledge that. So we have an infrastructure bill that we worked hard to try to get the administration and the Republicans to get on. They failed to. Uh, we've got put people back to work at good paying wages. Uh, we are on the precipice of a depression. And to come out of it, um, we need to rebuild this country. We've got $3 trillion of unmet needs when it comes to infrastructure in this country. We are a first world economy, barely, uh, with third world infrastructure. So that's first, uh, going ahead with healthcare, getting a public option as soon as possible. Um, Contra Costa is a wonderful example of a country, a county that actually has a public option, the Contra Costa Health Plan. Um, so those two, uh, and labor, of course, getting people to work, uh, whether it's infrastructure and rebuilding this country um, or rebuilding our education system. Those are our priorities. And my admonition to our my colleagues is, first, we have to take the Senate, um, add to the House, and ch change the occupancy of the, of the White House but we can't mess around. We have to demonstrate to the American people and to the world that we're going to work and we're gonna deliver for people. Do you have any uh, hope that some of your Republican colleagues may break from the party and uh, no longer support Trump? I, I don't know. I, I've, I've watched people who um, I consider good people, uh, friends um, who won't stand up to the president. They really have three options. Uh, they can stand up and be attacked 
and lose their primary in vicious ways. Um, the um, just unbelievable lies so that they're um, shamed in communities that uh, they have been um, pillars of for many years. Uh, they can choose to do that. Um, they can choose to retire, which most of the good people have, or they choose to go along. And um, the Republican Party and what's happened to it is a former Republican who changed parties um, 20 years ago is part of what's wrong with this country. It's been taken over by, it's a cult, it's not a party. If I may ask you a more uh, poignant question, do you have any thoughts on the expanding the size of the Supreme Court? I am hesitant. Um, having said that, you know, Roosevelt is often criticized for trying to pack the court. Um, but a little known in history to most Americans is while he didn't add any justices, uh, it worked. Uh, a switch in time save nine is a famous expression from that period that goes to a justice uh, named Roberts who changed from a, a majority five votes who said that the federal government had no role in banning children from the workforce, had no role in whether people worked 67 hours a week. Um, so uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, people think don't pack the court, you're overreaching. Um, but President Roosevelt, I'm not sure that those five have, would have changed if it wasn't for Roosevelt's determination to get the public outraged about what was happening in the Supreme Court. So I would prefer not to. I would prefer to have the American public speak. And the first way to speak is 34 days from now, is to kick this guy's ass and take the Senate. Uh, well, who could disagree with that? Um, um, uh, what are your thoughts about um, uh, increasing, uh, decreasing the term limits from 12 to eight to 12 or 18 years for the Supreme Court? Yeah, I, I think that's a good concept. Um, you know, the Supreme Court was set up in a different era and an era where only white men who own property um, and that didn't include slaves, uh, many of them did own slaves, were allowed to have a voice in the Supreme Court. The world has changed a lot, uh, thank goodness. And um, I think it's time to reconsider the makeup of the Supreme Court, but particularly the tenor. This, this has been, it's not just the Supreme Court, it's the district courts, it's the appellate courts. Uh, they have been quite deliberate. And I have to hand it to the Heritage Foundation, the Koch brothers, those folks, because all the time they've been railing about activist judges, they meant activist conservative judges. And they have filled the, the judicial system. Um, and you know what this is about is the country's changing and they don't want it to change. They want, want white men to run things. And uh, that's not the way this country should be. People, the only caste system in America should be the a caste system of merit, irrespective of what gender you are, what your sexual makeup is, um, what your ethnicity is. We want people of talent who work hard um, to discover the cures to cancer, to, to illuminate, illuminate our kids, to teach our kids, to move us forward. And these folks don't want that. They have a strong sense of entitlement that they should rule America. And um, cheating and breaking the rules is acceptable. Well, we are facing some very difficult times in the next 30 days. We could find the uh, Supreme Court moving further to the right, as well as having to make all these phone calls, which nobody loves, but everyone needs to do. What words of encouragement could you give to our volunteers as we embark on this final sprint to the end of vic to victory? You know, people have died for this. Um, our, our mythology is that people sacrifice. Um, and I, I, I have immersed myself in much of the great writing right now in the last few weeks about slavery and racial injustice. Uh, the Great Migration, a great book, her latest book, Cast. Uh, the other half has never been told. An amazing book about how um, slavery is part of the reason why America, a large part, became uh, an economic powerhouse and continues to be 
Um, so when we talk about reparations, I am enthusiastic about that. So this is no messing around. This is people's lives. Uh, this is whether young people will have equal opportunity, whether we'll continue to have a country that has a judicial system that is predominantly uh, aimed towards white men um, to protect them uh, and to, to inhibit people who are of color and, and women to um, contribute. So this, this vote is no ordinary vote. This is about the future of the country. And um, people have sacrificed much more. That's why I'm so proud of you that you, you're, you're sacrificing your evenings and you're calling strangers and texting them. This is how democ democracy has saved. You know, Tadokville wrote in Democracy in America that America was based on a very simple premise after all. <sighs> like, hard, hard for me not to be emotional at this moment. He said that America's basic genius was that we depended on or extraordinary actions from ordinary people, such as, our, such as our challenge for 34 days, is to do everything we can to contact every person we can, to let them know how important it is that no matter the obstacle, they cast their vote and they know the consequences of that vote. Congressman, on behalf of all 200 people who are here today, I cannot thank you enough for your inspirational words and your vision in showing us the way forward. Uh, what we'd like to do now, if it's all right with you, is move on to our next speaker. And it's quite a good segue. Uh, thank you again. We are lucky tonight to have with us Professor Raul Hinosa. I'm sorry? I just want to thank Jackie in particular. Thank you all. We, as you can see, Professor Hino Hinojosa Ojeda is a leading scholar uh, trained at the University of California in LA. Uh, and he is one of the leading scholars on Latinx and the impact of Latinx communities in North America and South America. If you would join me in welcoming him so he can give us an idea of what the impact that this is having on Latinx communities and any advice you have for us. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's a really great pleasure to be here. Um, I wanna uh, take this time to uh, congratulate everybody here that we are ushering in the future. Not, I, I really do believe not only are we going to win this election, but this is a pivotal election in terms of a new America that's going to be able to emerge. And I, I'm saying that um, in part because I, I, li I, I live in California now, at, uh, teaching at UCLA. I was actually trained in Chicago, but that's another story. Um, but the, the, what I want to tell you is the story of California in the sense that we flipped California. Don't forget, this is the land of 187, right? This was the land of, 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 uh, of Republicans from Ronald Reagan for 25 years. And mm -hmm. we are now the leading light in many ways of the progressive transformation, in part because we were able to embrace the new reality of this beautiful America that's emerging of a demographic diversity. And I just want to uh, highlight a couple of points before, uh, I, and I would like to get some, some questions from everybody. Here's a couple of interesting things. There's 32 million eligible Latino voters right now in the United States, of which only 60% are registered, okay? The, but let's be also clear that there's another 10 million uh, uh, people who that could become citizens that could become voters, all right? And there's also 11 million undocumented, which are also dying to become US citizens and to be able to participate. That would fundamentally change the future uh, uh, of the United States. Are you listening, Fox News? All right, now, uh, I, I just put up um, uh, on, on the chat uh, an op-ed that I published in, in Bloomberg News today. Uh, I, I just bring it up because, as you can see behind me, we've been doing a lot of work on the essential workers. A couple of points to make clear. The, uh, undocumented workers are the most essential workers in the U.S. economy. Okay, I made a movie once called A Day Without a Mexican. You may have seen me in it. It's pretty, you know, we thought it, we did this like 15 years ago thinking, oh, we better do this because we're going to have immigration reform and nobody's going to know the bad old days when when immigrants were being attacked. Well, guess what, all right? And if we actually live 
in a world of a, of a Trump re-election where he can do good on his promise of massive um, uh, um, deportations and a reduction of immigration, we would have this day, which by the way, this is very important because we use it in our, in our, 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 our very effective phone calling. The, the essential workers are not only critical today, they're gonna be even more critical into the future. And bottom line is, and I do wanna bring this up that uh, immigration reform, hopefully this is why a lot of us are doing this work becomes as, as uh, uh, hopefully um, President-elect Biden has said on his first day in office, immigration reform is going to be on uh, the order uh, of activities. And this is extremely important to be able to capture this, this potential, this potential transformation uh, of, of the United States. Now, finally, let me just make a couple of points about this, the areas that we are flipping. The states that we are flipping, okay, Arizona, Montana, Colorado, uh, and, and in, obviously in California, all of these have experienced 20 to 30% growths of the share of Latinos in their uh, uh, in, in, in the electorate, all right? In, in Arizona, we're up from 16% 20 years ago to 24% of the electorate. In Florida, we're up from 10 to 20% of the electorate, people that are gonna vote now. This is just in the last few uh, elections. L Latinos are coming out to vote already in droves. The, the number of people expected, Latinos expected to vote uh, up from six, uh, 2016 to now is an additional 2 million uh, voters. The problem is we're not reaching them. The, the polls are now showing that the vast majority of them have not been contacted by either party. And let me just make a shout out, you know, to what Jackie's doing and what Magali's doing. We're doing Spanish language uh, 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 phone banks. Let me tell you, it's spectacular, okay? I, I, I actually love doing this. I just turn it on. I just turn it on and do it all day long in between when I'm writing. And, you know, you talk to people all over the world. I'm already uh, all over the country. I'm already on Spanish language television. I, I dedicate myself to Univision and Telemundo and, and speaking political uh, um, commentary in Spanish. They all know who I am, okay? And they're very excited to be able to talk to people ab about it. And, and let me tell you, when you talk to them and they say, oh yeah, we're voting. 10 members of my family, 15 members of my family, right? This is the type of thing that we get when we invest in the Latino vote. So, you know, you're not all gonna learn Spanish, which I know you'd all love to, but definitely make it happen in your agenda, in every single one of these districts. I could go on and on and on. I have a book coming out called the Beyond the Trump Paradox, you know, it, it turns out that, that, you know, Trump in many ways, I think will go down as having been launching his campaign, attacking Latinos is actually like Pete Wilson in California. Thank you very much, because we're gonna flip the, the, the country uh, with this new demographic. Uh, I think I'll Yay. stop for a second there. Muchísimas gracias, Profesor. Hasta la victoria siempre. Presente. Oh and thank you so much for your inspiring words. We now have with us perhaps one of the most world-renowned authors we have ever seen come out of the Bay Area, Amy Tam. Tan, who grew up in San Francisco. She's a trailblazer for our Asian American women, chronicling the struggles of immigrants. She's, an, as I explained, internationally renowned. By the way, did you know her books have been translated into 35 languages? And she also is gonna be sharing with us her views of what is at stake. Hi there. <laughs> Raul, boy, what an inspiring talk. Uh, Tengo que aprender español para que pueda hablar con los, las comunidades de españoles. So, oh, Amy. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I'm Good. so happy to hear this. And I'm so honored to be here among all of you who are doing this good hard work. Um, I've been ranting on Facebook and giving money to the candidates and especially to those uh, Senate candidates who can help us flip the Senate blue. 
Um, but I got to this point, I think, with a lot of friends um, where we're just wringing our hands and we needed to do something more. And we finally decided to do what you're already doing, which is to get on the phone or to use our fingers to tap uh, out te text messages. So I'm, I'm committed to doing that. I'm, I'm uh, running a, a, a drive on the 4th with about 40 people who are going to learn to be volunteers. Um, and uh, so it's really exciting to be here. We're all here for the same reason. We want to have a blue White House. We want to have a blue Senate that can open the way for our blue White House to do its job and bring us back to the country that we once had. Um, we also have our personal reasons why we are so involved with this. And I wanted to tell you what my reasons are. There, there may not be the, the absolute top reasons on many levels for some people, but this, I think what's at stake for each of us is something within us that relates to how we became who we are and, and that relates to our families. Um, let me just say this, that I have a lot in common with Kamala Harris. She's 14 years younger than I am, but she and I were both born in Oakland at Kaiser Permanente Hospital on MacArthur Boulevard. We were both born to very short statured um, women and um, who had a really fierce personality, a, a, a great sense of determination. Uh, we were born to immigrant parents and um, we went to public schools. And we got to decide um, what we were going to do with our lives. Our parents as immigrants had this American dream, and that was that their children would be able to take advantage of opportunities and become, through hard work, successful. Uh, so Kamala Harris and I, we are all American. Um, I also want to tell you more about um, Something that drove me to want to be part of this, um, you know, this get out the vote uh, drive. And that is um, in 2016, I think like a lot of um, many of you here, I, I assumed Hillary was going to win. And the next day I was crushed. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I had one chapter to write on a book and I was so devastated. I didn't know what I was going to write. Uh, and it was a chapter on my father. And suddenly I had this terrible thought in my head. Who would my father have voted for? Now, my father died when I was 15. He was an electrical engineer, but he was also a minister, a Baptist minister. He was an evangelical. And, and it's, he was somebody who wrote a sermon once because he was upset that prayer was no longer allowed in public schools. He wanted God everywhere, on the money, you know, and the on the flag everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, if there was one thing that would have made my father vote for Trump, it would have been abortion. And he would have a vote, he would have voted against all women's rights for that one particular thing. And I had actually cut off relations with friends who voted for Trump. And I thought, would I have broken off my relationship with my father who I, I adored? Um, and then I thought of something else and that was my mother. My mother was in an abusive marriage for her first 10 years of her life. She could not get out of this marriage. This is a man who brought home many women he emotionally abused her, mentally abused her, wouldn't let her have a divorce. During this time, my mother found love in the, uh, with a man who would become my father. And my father came to the United States in 1947 on a student visa and my mother followed him in 1949. So I'm thinking about all of this and a particular evening in which I was talking to my mother. I was in my late uh, 20s. I had, we were sitting in the car, it was raining. We were gonna go in a restaurant and I told her that I was pregnant and I didn't know what to do. My husband and I were not ready to raise a family. I was scared because 
This pregnancy happened when we were on vacation, when there was a lot of drinking going on. I did not want to bring into a world a, a child I, I would not have the means to take care of. Um, and I was in this field of, of developmental disabilities. Um, and my mother said to me, you know, if you wanna have a child, it doesn't matter how poor you are, you can find a way to raise this child. And then she said, but if you don't wanna have a child, no one, no one should make you have that child, not your husband, not your mother-in-law, not your friends, no one, only you can decide. And then she told me about this man who was her husband who raped her over and over again throughout the course of this marriage and that she had had three abortions. And I realized that had my father said to her, we're voting for Trump because I'm against abortion, my mother would have said to him, what? You think you are better than me now? You are saying I shouldn't have had the abortions. I shouldn't have fallen in love with you. You're gonna tell me now what to do? And I realized that my father who adored my mother probably would have listened to her because he had a great deal of respect for her as well. These are the kinds of stories I'm sure many of you have as well, personal stories that keep you motivated, make you want to also support everything in this government. It is not, it's the environment, it's healthcare for everybody. What I am motivated to, why I am motivated to work has to do especially with these three things, women's rights, immigration, a path to immigration. My parents became illegal when their student visas ran out and faced deportation. And I wouldn't have been born in, I would have been raised in this country. I was born here, but I wouldn't have been raised here if they had been deported back to China. Immigration and also racial equality, equal rights, because this is something that we are now facing so shockingly um, in this current administration. And that's why I wear this t-shirt that reminds people I am indeed an American. Um, I thank you all so much for the work that you're doing. We're all in this together. Um, we're gonna get those votes out. I'm, I'm also gonna get my family, make sure those in Wisconsin are gonna vote as well. So thank you, thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you tonight. Amy, thank you so much for sharing your personal story. As you pointed out, we all have one. And if we can all move forward together, hopefully we'll win. Uh, to that end, uh, folks, we are now getting down to the, uh, the weeds, the dark and the dirty. How do we conduct a GO2V in a time of pandemic? And with us today is our only, our best, field director and strategist par excellence, Andrew Truman Kim. Not only is a former congressional staffer, he has been a campaign consultant over 10 years and rarely loses. So Andrew, point out the, the direction to victory for us. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us day one of GOTB. October 1st for many campaigns is the beginning of the end. Um, and GOTV in 2020 is going to be different due to the pandemic. Um, uh, and as just as a reminder, GOTV is our process of getting out the vote. Um, and we're gonna be focusing on getting out the vote in key states, we believe that can help us flip the US Senate uh, by reaching low propensity Democrats independent voters that are likely gonna vote progressive. And remembering that get out the vote, GOTV is not just getting out the vote, it's getting out the volunteers. And getting out the volunteers in 2020 is also a little bit different. And that's why we wanna say a big thank you again for everybody joining us today. We're gonna to talk about the different types of volunteer opportunities in 2020. Um, but before I jump in and do so, um, I want to make sure my screen is being shared. Let's do 
It was being shared, Andrew. Thank you. Um, just a quick reminder of our priority in the next 31 days. Our next, our priority this year is to focus on flipping the U.S. Senate. Uh, why? For two reasons. Uh, number one, we have a very viable opportunity, uh, maybe close to in over half a decade, to put into perspective in 2018 to flip the U.S. House we had to take back 24 house seats. In 2020, in the next 31 days, uh, out of the 23 Republican Senate seats up for grabs, including Mitch McConnell, including Susan Collins, including Lindsey Graham, all we need to do is flip four states, four seats. Um, the second reason is the moral imperative. As, as many of you know, I mean, what's at stake? Um, in many think the moral imperative is Donald Trump. Uh, in, in many cases it is, but it doesn't stop there because in, in so many ways, Donald Trump should have been impeached, but he wasn't impeached because the US Senate, Mitch McConnell blocked the process. Despite his 30 criminal investigation, that process was blocked. Um, but not only did he block, did they block the impeachment process? I mean, since the Democrats took back the house, over 460 bills that uh, the, the, the Democrats have passed. Thank you, Mark Desanier, Congressman Desanier. 460 bills. We're talking about access to health care, lowering prescription drug costs, environmental protection, election security. But all of those bills are being blocked by Mitch McConnell. Our strategy is focusing on states in the West. And we're very excited because uh, when we look at our pathway to victory, we are on track. Of the various states that we're targeting, our voter deficit goal is around 267,000, which means we wanna be able to reach out to about 7.3 million voters. And I'm excited and so proud to share that Commit to Flip Blue and Flip the West together as partners. As of today, we have officially hit 5.1 million voters. And so we are uh, already half, half the way there, but we need your help in the last 31 days to get to that 7.3 million votes. And again, as mentioned, GOTV in 2020 is different. I'm gonna cover really briefly three reasons why it's different and three requests we have for everyone in this call today. The first reason why GOTV is different is there is no door knocking. And because there is no door knocking, democratic campaigns at the end of the day may end up talking to less voters. Why is that the case? Because uh, phone numbers are not required on voter registration forms, unlike your mailing address. So in many of these battleground states, we could only reach about half the voters. Actually, noting that 20% of the phone numbers are wrong, like much less than half. Uh, second, phone bank uh, contact rates are much lower than door knocking contact rates. Um, actually, about half of the contact rate efficacy. So that means we need to make more calls now than ever before. And lastly, not being able to go door knocking somewhat levels the playing field to Republican campaigns that were never intending on investing in door knocking or precinct walking or neighbor to neighbor canvassing or grassroots organizing. For, for Democratic campaigns, even pre Barack Obama campaign, neighbor to neighbor, precinct walking. That was the hallmark of our operation. And being unable to, like, unlike Republicans, I mean, the, the GOP made their, pub, their strategy public. It's voter suppression, it's fake news, it's negative attacks, and it's now defunding the government. That's their strategy. But for Democrats, it's people power. And being able to not do door to door does affect our operation. Um, second thing we learned in Geo, um, as we get into GOTV, that for volunteering, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, for many of us, uh, during the midterm election, when October came, we just showed up to the headquarters. We just showed up to the campaign office, and then we figured it out. Well, when everything is virtual, there's a little bit more time, energy, and effort required from all of us. So we have to be a little bit more patient. We have to learn a little bit more of the tools, more of the technology. Um, you know, the things that we request is for folks to feel confident in Zoom, to learn about Google Docs, to learn about the, the automatic dial system, 
and also learn new techniques like relational organizing and a vote tripling. The third reason it's different is there's no house parties, no campaign rallies, no volunteer fairs. And that also limits our ability to recruit brand new volunteers because in the midterm election, each one of these house parties were an important entry point for new rank and file volunteers. And that's why we are so grateful for everybody joining tonight's One Month to Victory event um, because these opportunities to bring in new folks, um, noting that for many of our older activists, virtual can seem intimidating, but it is so vitally important. So now for the three requests. Request number one is we are asking for everyone to consider phone banking in 2020. Uh, for many of you who said, I'm going to door knock, but I would never phone bank. I'm going to postcard, but I'll never phone bank. Well, in 2020, if we don't phone bank, there's no other ways to have conversations with voters. And case study after case study says, having a conversation with a voter, a live conversation, a person to person conversation is one of the most effective ways of persuading a voter and turning out voters. Why? Because it's more memorable. Social psychologists say, when you're able to share your personal story, even on the phone, your personal story, that creates an emotional connection, both conscious and subconscious, oftentimes way more memorable than even the most persuasive messaging points. Um, second, it's more meaningful because at the end of the day, folks, it's not just about counting votes. It's not just about persuading voters. It's about building relationships. It's about building relationships on behalf of the Democrats on, in all of these battleground states. It's building a relationship on behalf of Joe Biden. It's building a relationship on behalf of Commit to Blip, Flip Blue and Flip the West and building a relationship on behalf of our movement that this year we must take a stand, that our movement must take a stand when we know Donald Trump and the Republican Senate is pushing an agenda driven on corruption, authoritarianism, and inequality. And when you do phone bake with us, we have a one-stop shop for you. Uh, Commit to Flip Blue Flip the West is very excited to invite you to join our virtual HQ where we will provide training, an individualized training for you. We will uh, uh, train you on new techniques and provide you specialized rooms as well. So our second request for our activists is realizing that with only 31 days left, that we want to be very intentional with our time. And so we are asking if each one of you would consider writing up your own plan, your own personal GOTV plan, thinking holistically. The next 31 days, thinking about all your family obligations, thinking about your work obligations. But in that plan, do you have some time for GOTV? How much time do you have per week? How much time are you willing to do? And if you can budget that in advance and to be intentional, that could be very helpful. And for those who only have a little bit of time, like two hours a week, we definitely recommend the weekend. So the weekends of action are great, especially if you're brand new and you haven't done phone banking yet because we are committed, commit to Flip Blue and Flip the West. We are committed to provide a hundred trainers, a hundred trainers for these weekends so that we can provide you a good volunteer user experience and make sure that we can go at a speed and pace that's comfortable for you. And think about it, if there's four weekends, right? And if each weekend you're about to make 30 to 50 calls, right? That adds up. If you do four weekends, let's say one shift is about two hours, you add that up for four weeks, that's 250 voters that you could be calling. That, if, if everyone on this call, we have over a hundred people on this call can contact 250 voters, that can have a exponential impact. And the final request for activists and is, and especially for those who joined us today, you are part of day one of GOTV. You're not just an activist, you're a superhero activist. And here is our request for superhero activists in 2020. During the pandemic, when we don't have door knocking, we don't have house parties, don't have uh, campaign rallies, we need your help to do relational organizing because there is a chance that we may not we're going to reach not only less voters, but recruit less volunteers. And that's why we're asking if you would be willing to reach deep into your own personal network. As 
Uh, Amy Tan just said she's going to reach her own friends in Wisconsin and in other battleground states. That's amazing. And that is something that, you know, for many activists in, in the midterms, they're like, yeah, to strangers, I'll call any stranger, I'll postcard any stranger. But to my own family, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. But in 2020, we need all of us to consider reaching out to our friends and family, um, reaching out to anyone we know. And so our first request is friend banking. If you can come up with the list of five people that you know that live in Arizona, Colorado, that live in uh, uh, Iowa, that live in Kansas, Montana, Alaska, even North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, any of, this, any of the battleground states, you know five to 10 people, could you send them an email? Could you send them a text message? Can you give them a call and be like, talk, what do you think about this election? We need your help. I know I usually don't do this, but every voter can make a difference. And would you consider being a vote tripler, reminding three of your friends? Would you consider volunteering just one day? You can come with me. I'll say it's all virtual. I'll send you a link. The second is adopt the voter. And adopt the voter means when you are making phone calls in 2018, in the midterms, when we're calling voters, uh, and someone says, yes, I'm going to vote for the Democrat. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we just hang up. In 2020, we need to take every, we, we don't just need voters, we need super voters. And so to get super voters, if someone says, yes, I'm voting for the Democrat, I'm voting for Mark Kelly, I'm voting, voting for John Hickenlooper, I'm voting for Teresa Greenfield, say, thank you so much. Would you consider reminding three friends, what we call vote triplet? Great. Do you mind if I can follow up with you personally? to remind you when ballots drop next week. You don't mind? I can get your email? Okay. Then what happens? Right after you hang up the phone call, you send a personal email. Thank you so much for talking to me. Here's the link to Teresa Greenfield's website. Here's the link to the Joe Biden website. And also I'm with a group called Commit to Flip Blue. They're doing phone banking next week. I know you've never done this before, but it's really easy. And I'll be there with you if you can join me. And that's taking ownership of GOTV. And you can do a personal email, you could do a personal text, and maybe even a personal phone call on election day. And the last final request is for us to consider not just phone banking with us, and we would love for you to join our phone bank, uh, even one day. But imagine if you don't just phone bank with us, but you help co-host your own phone bank party with us, right? So instead of just phone banking this upcoming Friday, you host your own phone bank party you, and you invite 10 of your friends. If you invite 10 of your friends to join us, where as a co-host, uh, we will provide all of the technical tools, the training, the logistics, provide all of the support, but you could be the MC of the Zoom room. That is how we can have a, full, a force multiplier effect and create that network impact. And this is exactly what we need during the last 31 days and our request for if everyone in this call, we have over a hundred, can all host one phone bank party and inviting 10 of your friends, that can have an exponential effect. And so with that, on behalf of Commit to Flip Blue and Flip the West, thank you so much. Andrew, that was so inspiring. People are just bouncing off the walls, thinking of things to do. And now we're gonna get really deeper into the weeds. Uh, first off, we'd like to show you a quick video spot, uh, spotlighting you, the volunteers, and then we'll talk about some more specific things of what all of us can do to make sure we win. There are many reasons why this is the most important election of our lifetimes. We must flip the Senate and secure the presidency with an overwhelming and unequivocal victory. To do this, we will need tremendous voter turnout. And the best way to get voters to the polls is with direct contact. Our army of trained and confident volunteers are working tirelessly to reach voters, help them understand the importance of their vote, and convince them to get out the vote. And that's where you come in. We need your help because every volunteer equals votes. Our lives depend on this election, and you can truly make a difference. Join us today to help with this important work while giving back to your community.
that was that was really intense, everyone. It was beautiful, inspiring. Uh, all the speakers, uh, we are so grateful for your your inspiration um, to get us going. Uh, we are grateful to our our volunteers, as you saw in the superhero video. Uh, here we are um, to get the things you know not uh, going with the field operation. We need a army of volunteers, um, but we also are incredibly grateful to all our donors, and we are asking you to help us um, to help us fund. Uh, field operations, field organizers in battlefield states. The next one, John, before that, you need to go. The previous one. There you go. Okay, thank you. Um, we, what are we funding? We are funding um, five field organizers in battlefield states. Uh, we are uh, incredibly grateful to Magali and uh, Ruben who, are, who have joined us to help expand our Latinx outreach program. We are doing a five who are 300 students calling states. We are funding campaign tools like Call Hub, which help us reach uh, 285,000 voters. Uh, Andrew spoke about the um, uh, Virtual Action Center program, and we're helping fund that to help us uh, be, be successful. And thanks to you, we have raised $95,000 so far. So please help us reach 100,000. We can do this. And I believe we can do this today and tomorrow with your donations. Don't miss out. This is your chance to win this great prizes, uh, Biden-Harris um, yard signs, these other prizes, and this beautiful portrait of Senator Kamala Harris. If you donate today and tomorrow, you can win these prizes. So please make a donation. Postcards. Thank you. The next one. And here we are. Postcards are completed, everyone. Thanks to Diana Dowdy, who is not with us today. She led the effort of leading a 3,500 volunteers. And they wrote, together they wrote 491,000 postcards in seven states. We had 11,000, 11 dis distribution hubs around the Bay Area. It was a magnificent endeavor. Now, this postcard operation was so successful thanks to this wonderful, wonderfully dedicated and efficient group of postcard leaders. Thank you, every one of you, for making this possible. Okay, get out the vote. Here we are team. All the months of preparation have paved the way to get us to this point. We are ready to get out the vote. So please mark your calendars and plan accordingly. Emily is gonna go through uh, specifics as to what every uh, each of these events entail. So please uh, take out your calendars and get ready to sign up. Emily? Thank you, Jackie. So what, what we need from you is to um, sign up for various activities that we have. The next one that's coming up is, you can go to the next slide, John, um, is the, um, uh, and the next slide too. These are the campaigns that we're going to be calling. Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Montana, and North Carolina in Spanish. So those are the states that we are hoping to flip. We have really good research from Andrew that allows us to target these states and we think we have a very good chance at all of them. Next slide. So this weekend, October 3rd and 4th, we're going to have what we're calling our training palooza. Um, you can see all the different activities that are there. You can learn about going from postcards to phone banks. We have basic computer and tra script training. We have express, if you're not quite sure what to do, you can have quick questions. 
If you only have a tablet or you have an old computer with a microphone that doesn't work, you can still make calls. So come at noon and we'll help you get set up with that. Then at one o'clock, we're going to have our Battleground political update. And then at two o'clock, if you have lots of problems with technology, please come at two o'clock. We will have a number of different people there to help you. And then if you want to do um, Spanish phone banking, you can do it at 3.30 um, in the afternoon with Jackie and her team. There will be a similar kind of uh, work on Sunday. Look at the, the uh, I think that the um, link is in the uh, chat and you can see the actual date and times. After that, starting October 5th, we're going to be going 4 to 8 p.m. Wednesday, Monday through Friday, and on the weekends, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. doing uh, phone banking. We'll have two states every hour, and you'll get the confirmation in email, which will tell you which state and script. If you have an absolute favorite state that you really want to call, you can do that state also. But remember, we are targeting the ones that are the most likely to flip first. So um, those states will be the ones we'll do. We're doing calling and texting starting on October 10th. We're going to have a big day of kickoff for, for um, get out the vote. And then from October 11th through November 3rd, we'll be calling every day and every evening. So sign up now. You need to unmute, Jackie. Uh, thank you, Emily. Uh, I, I was saying that you are the mastermind behind these plans. Um, you, you started working on uh, virtual uh, phone banks um, around the time I, I got sick with COVID back, back in March. And I've seen you work so hard, seven days a week, working over 60 hours, and um, everybody just needs to know the incredible commitment you have in, in making all this possible. So thank you, Emily. Um, you heard from uh, Professor Ojeda why it's critical to get out the Latinx vote. Uh, he was just so inspiring and I'm so grateful he was able to join us today. Uh, with the importance given to Arizona this year, in the swing states, we, um, we understand that that is uh, crucial that we mobilize the Latinx community, especially now with the pandemic and the uncertainties we face. We must ensure that all Latinx and Spanish speaking voters are ready to cast their vote on November 3rd. With the, with the help of 449 volunteers and 25 trainers, we are doing just that. We have an amazing team that, that are joining us every shift to make this happen. You know, we're working incredibly hard. Um, and I just, you know, I'm just so grateful for the team that, that I'm, I'm getting to know that, you know, I, I, I'm calling my friends because we are spending um, every day together running these phone banks, uh, running breakout rooms, running trainings, um, we really have become a family. So uh, thank you uh, to our wonderful volunteers and, and trainers that are helping get out the Latino vote. And like Professor Ojeda said, the, 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 the Latinos have been ignored by both Republicans and Democrats. And it is upon us, it is upon us, the grassroots organizations that are working hard to help reach those voters. So I, want, I just wanna acknowledge the grassroots groups like ours for making that happen. And then here we are with, uh, with, the, with the schedule. We have uh, events seven days a week. We have two shifts on weekends in the morning and in the afternoon. We have uh, wonder, um, the one thing I wanna plead with everybody um, we have um, we have these young 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 people that are really engaged and are you know want to do more and want to lead and they have so much potential, um, but they they have they they lack the technology that we need. Uh, Call Hub requires us to have a laptop or a desktop, and right now few of our exceptional volunteers. 
um, that have so much potential need help. If you have extra available, um, please reach out to me because uh, we do need them. So um, please, please reach out to your network to see if we can make that happen. Thank you. How do we reach out to you? Um, uh, we can, you can post my, my, my email. Um, so yes, please, please do. Uh, we, have, we have at least 10 volunteers that, that need the technology. So thank you for that. They need okay. computers, they need um, laptops and that have uh, audio and sound. Um, if they don't have audio and sound, they, um, they aren't that helpful. I'm going to turn this over uh, to Linda, and I, I, I'm very excited to introduce Linda. She's leading an incredible uh, texting team, um, and I want Linda to talk about it. Linda? Thanks, Jackie. Okay. Hello, everyone. Boy, this has been an incredible um, presentation. I'm so inspired by all of you. I uh, have the honor uh, of actually leading the uh, postcards for Alamo and Oakland. And I've met many of you on my front porch, streaming in every day, every week. Uh, and you have been an inspiration to me, a personal inspiration to me. So thank you all for being here tonight and for all you do for our cause. Text, texters are, we're ready to flip blue. Uh, we endorse and support. We know how important phone banking is. Phone banking is not for everyone. And so we're for those that are not able to phone bank. We also believe right now that getting out the vote, texting is a really wonderful opportunity for us to get smart links into the smart devices of our voters so that they have that information uh, there and they can actually use it even if they don't respond to us in a text. So just a little plug for texting at this point. So we have uh, 500 volunteers right now that we have trained. And training, you do need a desktop or a laptop uh, in order, or a smart tablet in order to be trained. And today we're texting for three organizations that we vetted that are totally focused on getting out the vote. Those three organizations are Resistance Labs, which is focused on low propensity voters in swing states, which we all know how important swing states are. And also it's for, um, and for Move On, which is the largest progressive organization in the country, working on what Andrew called the tripler effect, which is getting voters to get three more voters to vote. Uh, it's an amazing campaign as well. And environmental voter protection, which is concentrated on swing states again, uh, and vulnerable Senate seat states that have a, a propense or have a inclination to be uh, for climate change. They're, all three of these are very grassroots, nonprofit organizations that are nimble and very data-driven. We have 10 text trainers today nationwide, but as of today, we've recruited about six more. And I wanna really comment on something Jackie said, the teens are coming. They are coming in droves. Last night, I trained a group of seven teens. Today, five teens showed up at a training. They want to get involved. They want to lead. They know how important this is. We let them down, the older generation, and um, we need to get back that democracy for them. And then they need to never, ever, ever take it for granted again. So we have 10 trainers nationwide from Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia, to New Jersey, to Southern and uh, Northern California. In September, we offered five days a week of training and we sent out 3 million texts. We have a saying, all of you that say, I'm not technical, I can't do it, I'm afraid. We have a phrase we took from the Republicans, no texter left behind. And so we will provide you individual support. We don't give up on you. If you can't get it, we will meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Our total, our goal is to get you texting. Next slide. So now we're mobilizing to get out the vote. That's what October is all about. And we are going to, as of tomorrow morning, when you go onto our website, you will see that we have seven days of training. We will have seven days a week of training. And on many of the days, we're gonna have 
two sessions, one at 10 in the morning and one at two. We also have people that are coming online that are going to do evening trainings for our teens and for our working young adults, our millennials that actually have jobs <laughs> and need to uh, do night trainings. So we're asking you to recruit three friends. We're asking you to, if you're going to be a texter, to set a personal goal. We're asking you to text five days a week. And we want you to attend our text banks, which we will have every day, seven days a week, because in those text banks, that's your opportunity to build enthusiasm. It's your opportunity to keep that momentum that we used to have together as a team in our hubs, and as Andrew said, in our home parties. And it's a time for you to support our texters because texting is an art, just like phone banking. And together as, a, as texters, we can help each other answer the important questions that are asked by our recipients of our texts and help us give an even more strong and important response to our recipients so that they can be an even better citizen and a more effective voter. So also every Saturday in October, we will have Saturday text marathons. Just so you know, with Move On, we are moving 500,000 texts every Saturday. A half a million texts every Saturday. So it starts tomorrow. So learn that. With resistance labs, we're going to be moving approximately 200 to 300,000. But Move On really sees Commit to Flip Boo as a major partner, and they have provided us great access to their texts. So we want to be a major part. And our goal is to send 5 million get out the vote texts in October. We'll get there. So come sign up at Commit to Flip Blue.com. Text underscore bank and we'll see you there amazing linda amazing hey andrew i don't think the three million are in are in our five million count we need to add the three million to the five million contacts so that will be a total of eight million contacts everybody great to go team i'm so excited thank you linda and here we are team connect we how do we stay connected we are moving so much information so rapidly. So for you to stay connected as to what we're doing or what the plans are every single day, please follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And to increase the following, please tag us at Commit to Flip Blue. Okay, next slide. Team, we are here. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have covered a lot. If we did not get to your questions tonight, then we will follow up with you by email. As we close tonight, I want you to remember Justice Ginsburg's mission. We need to use whatever talent we have to do the best work to the best of our abilities. I would like to leave you with a sense of urgency tonight. We have 34 days, we're 34 days away from the election that is the most important of our lifetime in our children's lifetime. There is nothing about these 34 days that we can take for granted. The focus right now is transferring the sense of urgency to everyone around us and to get them committed to make a plan. We cannot afford any distraction. I would like to give a huge thank you to all our magnificent, inspiring presenters tonight, to the dedicated Commit of the Blue Team, to David Traunstein for producing these amazing videos we saw tonight, to our superhero volunteers and supporters. And I wanna thank all of you. You are the foundation of our great country. You will be heard this moment. You will be heard in November. And you will do everything you can to steer America back down to the path defined by our founding fathers. Finally, my friends, stay safe during these challenging times. Keep your family safe and your good intentions strong. 
It's time for all of us to be notorious. Let's do it, team. We can do this. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.